Welcome back to the Tiger Hanger. This is Mike. Today I'm going to talk to you about some updates to some vintage collection items. And more or less, there's two major items with an update. And then have a little bit of discussion after that about kind of the oversaturation of vintage collection stuff that's on the market right now. What could that lead to? But we're going to look in depth at these items because I really think that the vintage collection scale versus the Black Series scale of Star Wars lends itself to world building the best and getting these more world building items is good but there's a plus and minus to all of this i'm gonna talk about it all coming up okay so first off we're going to talk about this new it's an all new indoor bunker that they are making and it does look pretty cool it looks good. It looks cool. It looks good. It looks uh, very screen accurate for the most part. They did even add some greenery to it. Like there's some plants on it and all that kind of stuff. Some debris. So that works really well. There's quite a few different features in this. But this isn't the first time they've made this. They did make one from the 90s. And we'll do a comparison to that here in a minute. Now it does have two sets of doors. As you can see, it's starting to open the outside. Just like in the movie. Uh, here's the back side of it. And you can see... That both sets of doors both slide open. You do have to fully assemble this thing. It just comes uh, completely disassembled. So you will have to assemble it, which doesn't look very hard. According to the little three-minute video that they had talking about it. So uh, it does look pretty good like that. But this is all it is. This and a figure. And it is $60. And so with that, you're paying quite a premium for a small display piece. Now, it does actually come with a figure. And the figure is the indoor trooper in the biker scout disguise i guess is what they're calling that uh we'll see exactly what they call it when we look at the card back but i do think it looks pretty good but for 60 bucks i'm not sure okay so if we look at the pricing structure right now of a figure it's generally 14 dollars. so you get one 14 figure and you get this uh it's a good idea though because i don't think they've ever made this indoor rebel commando in scout trooper disguise i don't think they've ever made this figure in the past so it's a new figure never made before sort of an exclusive figure and and the, the weird thing is why would you buy more than one bunker there's a lot of the other ones that are modular that you would connect together and make you know bigger hallways or a rounded off areas or you get two of the carbonite chamber and all that kind of stuff but this is a troop builder if you just leave the helmet on or it's just the one figure one and done so uh, just interesting how they went about all of this but it is a main mainline release so i expect to see it at walmart and targets maybe maybe definitely at bbts and all those places here is the packaging so what you expect to see so it does feel very reminiscent of their first one of these that they did which was the job of palace it's not a play set it's just scene <laughs> area but it was still, the Jabba Palace was kind of in the right direction. For 50 bucks, you got two figures and all of the components. And so for this, for 60, you only get one figure. And so prices, everything's getting more expensive. Everything's going up. So is the value there? If you really want this, the value's there. But is the value there for this versus the vintage one? Here's a picture of the boxed vintage version. And we'll look at a side-by-side -side here in a bit. But this came with the actual unit itself but only one set of sliding doors i believe uh, i have this i never opened it because i thought it was lame super lame but it comes with a catapult and uh ewok catapult kind of thing it also comes with like a tree stump next to it so you do get a few other pieces of world building included with it that you don't get with the modern ones so the vintage one has more and they went on sale for nine or ten bucks which i think is what i paid for mine so here's the side by side comparison shot so the new one is bigger it's like 50 percent bigger kind of exactly the size increase they've been doing lately oh well since 2012 or 11 with the bmf falcon and all that kind of stuff about 50 percent bigger and it it looks substantially larger and more detailed and all that kind of stuff but it's also commanding a much heftier price point than it did back in the day so with that though i do think it does look better than the one from the 90s but it doesn't really feel like a whole lot more other than an extra set of doors and some shrubbery on it, uh, the, the original one came with more set pieces. So the next item is going to be a fan channel exclusive. 
according to what they said. So I'm guessing you can still you can still pre-order this at BBTS, Pulse, all those places. But it is it's like ninety dollars, and uh, this is not the first time we've seen this. So I will go through all the previous iterations that they've made. But they did say that they fixed the joints. They tightened the joints because there were problems with them in the past. Uh, I had one of these, the Kmart one, and I'll show that here in a bit. But uh, when I opened it and put it together, it, I had so much trouble trying to make it stand. I just leaned it up against something. It was very disappointing with that. So the fact that he showed it off and didn't have any trouble posing it uh, is a good sign. So I hope they really fixed all that. But it, it does look good. I mean, I've always thought since day one it looked amazing. The problem was the joints and it holding itself up. Now, it does come with a Chewbacca. So let's take a closer look at Chewbacca. And Chewbacca is from Return of the Jedi, and he is a different... Uh, a newer head sculpt from what I understand, from what I'm hearing from people saying. But I don't really look at my Chewbacca's that close, and I don't have access to them. They're packed away, but uh, but still, I, it looks like Chewbacca. It looks fine to me, and uh, okay pack-in figure. They usually pack in the driver for this thing, but since it's Return of the Jedi and Chewbacca took it over, it makes sense, right? And I have one of my four ATSTs on display has a Chewbacca in it for that very reason. Here is Chewbacca riding in it. So I do want to point a few things out. Now, this is going to have some deco differences from the past iterations. I don't think there's anything else mold-wise that's different. So uh, I, you get the little flap-up eye pieces in there so the armor areas can flap up. Uh, you get the side gun and the other side piece and the front quad gun. And you are going to have the paint on the lower feet, which I, they've had an iteration like that before. But I don't know, I'm sure it's a different type of uh, mud paint that's on there. And you see a lot of carbon scoring all over it, right? Now, I haven't actually handled one of these in a while. I actually sold my loose one and just kept the sealed one because I just didn't need the loose one. But uh, the inside looks how I remember it. I don't know if there's any differences or changes to it. Or maybe they added some paint apps or stickers or something. I just don't remember. But, uh, but it looks fine. It looks fine. It's, it's pretty decent. Okay, so with this it's going to be a closed box and i i do feel a certain way about if it was closed box vintage like this was then i'm okay with a closed box modern and when you make a vintage collection it should match vintage and so it sort of does i think this one box wise and all that kind of stuff will match the vintage pretty close uh when it comes to the box art and all that kind of stuff so that looks pretty good Okay, so first off, we've got the Kmart version, which I think is the first time we saw this mold. I, I might be wrong, but the Kmart one, it was like 35 bucks back in the day, and I um, can't remember if it came with a figure or not. I don't think it came with a figure. I think that was the thing. They kept the price point low. Uh, Kmart wanted a low price point, but uh, that's my first exposure to it. If you look, you can see he's got paint on the lower legs and all that, the, the feet of this item also. Then we got the Walmart Legacy one. This was a Walmart exclusive. They repacked it. It's a Legacy collection. And so that one came later, I guess. I think. I believe. And of course, this one came with a figure. And I believe this one was 40 or 50. 40, I think. I think it was 40. I think they upped the price just a little bit to 40. So uh, includes the driver and all that kind of stuff. So added in a figure. So I, I think it was a pretty good value at 40. I think I picked one. I don't know. I, nope. I never picked this one up. I actually waited for the Black Series version. So that that's silly that they did that whole round of 3.75 inch figures called them black series and confused the market drastically that you've got them in similar type of packaging the black and red package packaging packaging and so with that this one here i think it was still around 40 45 something along those lines so i mean just kind of the pricing structure on this thing as it goes this one i think was clean though i i don't believe this one had the paint on the bottom but uh, and this is the one i have still in the box i guess i could look but uh, it does appear cleaner to me than some of the other versions. But researching and trying to find some pictures, I realized there's the Mandalorian one. I was like, what? Forgot about this one. So this one, I think I only saw this one at a Best Buy. And it's the only place I ever saw it. So, uh, And I can't remember how much that one was. I know it was at least 50 or... No, I think it was 70. I think it was 70. And it came with an exclusive uh, Klaatuian Raider. Klaatuian Raider. So it had an exclusive figure with it, of course, that makes it more desirable. And I was surprised how much people are asking for this on eBay. I don't know what it sells for, what people actually pay for it. People are asking like 200, 200, 250 for this thing, which is just crazy in my mind. 
All right, so uh, for pricing of these, you can see this screenshot here, and we're going to kind of segue into, are we really overstocked? Are we oversaturated with uh, vintage collection figures? And uh, so with this, I do want to talk about price. 90 bucks for the ATST says 62 for the bunker. I believe other places you might, like if it shows up at Walmart, it'll be 59.99 or Target, I guess. I'm guessing, I'm, but I know for a fact what they're going to charge you because it's right here on the screen. So you can see that it's real simple. Entertainment Earth and all those other places that you order from, you know, you can place your orders there too. So now let's get into this discussion here. Uh, I've noticed looking at this, scrolling through this, I got an email today from BBTS and it was about this. And I started scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. Vintage collection figures there are over 100 vintage collection figures on here. So let's take a look at these. Over a hundred figures. Some of these I forgot were even made. Some of these I haven't seen in a while because retail actually got rid of them. Now, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. Or hey, maybe BBTS is just awesome because they're keeping these in stock so collectors can get them anytime they want. If you want to get them in 2030, they'll still have them. I mean, I, I don't know. Most of the stuff I've seen clearanced out. Definitely that Lando. Uh, some of the stuff is I've seen super cheap at like Ollie's for six bucks. And so with that, they're still charging a premium at BBTS. Now, there's not, not, nothing against BBTS. I'm just saying there's so much of it out there. But if you go to Walmart, you'll see there's a ton of whatever the last wave they decide to let rot on the pegs is at Walmart. So is it oversaturated? Are we oversaturated with Vintage Collection? Are, are the options that we have out there stuff that nobody wants? I mean, there's a lot of stuff out there that I don't think really collectors want there's some really cool stuff out there and it's great that they kind of reissued a few things but some of the reissued stuff just doesn't move now i'm curious what other people think about that but am i the only one seeing this a hundred plus figures and i don't know how many of these i don't know how many of the figures of this hundred plus figures were already that character still in stock at BBTS, and then they got that reissued again, and so they doubled up, I don't know. And do they have a different uh, UBC code, or is the same one just added more to it, uh, to the existing listing? I don't know about all that kind of stuff, but it does concern me as vintage, I like the vintage collection way more than the Black Series, and just, I'm behind on it because I'm starting to lose interest, and starting to stop caring about even the vintage collection with Star Wars, because there's this oversaturation of stuff that I'm not interested in. But anyway, what do you think about these reveals? Do you think it's really worth the time to put this out for the fourth or fifth? Is it the fifth time they put this out for the fifth time? Uh, and you know what really sucks is if the fifth time it's the best version. You know, I guess you should say every time they put it out, it should be better. It should be improved. But for 90 bucks, um, I don't know. What do you think? What do you think about the price point? What do you think about the world building that's going on with the indoor bunker and all of that? And... What do you think they should be making if these aren't the ones that you'd like to see? Do you want to see a, a B-Wing fighter? Do you want to see an A-Wing fighter? Do you want to see different set pieces? I'm curious. Let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe. Titanium Hanger out.